So today we'll look at the path chooser input widget in PyGoobo. It's, it's basically a widget that lets you choose folders and files. So here's an example. So this is the path chooser input widget. When I preview it, I can click on this little play button, which uh, works as a, as a browse button. And here I can just type a file name and you can have that file name show up in here so that your users can choose a file or folder. I'll show you how to use this widget. Hi, my name is Jobin, and I'm an open source developer. My channel is called Jobin Pi, and it's all about Python and Linux. Welcome. Okay, so this widget is part of PyGoobo. It doesn't come with TKenter itself. It's uh, specific to PyGoobo. And it's found in the PyGoobo widgets tab at the top. So you know how you have containers and control and display and all these other widgets uh, that are part of TKenter. But under PyGoobo widgets, there's one that's called path chooser input. And when you click on it, I just made you know, a second one but it basically contains an entry and a button and it's all within a frame. I'm just gonna delete this one because I already have one here on my window. But essentially when you save this project and go to code and when you generate the code and copy it into a Python file, when you run it, it'll look something like this. So this widget has a few different properties that we can change. So if I click on it, first we have default extension, image, initial directory, must exist, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. So the one we'll start with is initial directory. So this is the initial directory that's gonna show up when the browse button is clicked. So for example, I'm gonna set this to home Jobin documents test. Just going to save it and preview it. When I click on it, you'll notice that it takes me to that folder as soon as I click on the uh, the browse button. And in the browse button, I know it looks like a play button. You you can actually change that image if you wanted to. Okay, so that's what initial directory does. Then there is another property called path initial path value. So the difference between these two is anything that you type here will show up in the entry widget. So if I click on, if I preview this, it says test here, but if I click on browse, it still takes me to that initial directory folder I had in there before. So this is what will show in the entry widget when you set the, when you set the path. And you can tie this path to a uh, text variable here if you wanted to. So I'm just going to delete the path here for now. Another thing that you can change is the title. It's it's going to change the title of the dialog. So if I put here and select an image, then if I preview it and click on browse, at the top it says select an image. So that's what that does. Setting the title changes that. And I'm going to explain what must exist does and default extension. I'm going to I'm going to show you that here uh, shortly. So right now we're set to file mode. There's two different modes. There's file and directory. So right now it's going to ask to choose a file. In other words, if I click here, it's asking for a file name. So if I choose test.jpg and click open, it just puts that in here. So that leads us to this property that says must exist. So this is what it does. Right now it's set to true. So it means that the file must exist. So that means if I click on browse and if I type a file name that doesn't exist and try to click on open, it won't let me type that file name in there because it doesn't exist. If I change this to false, must exist false, then I can type anything I want and then click save and it still allows it. 
and that actually changed the name of the button as well like notice here right now it says save if I change this to must exist true the file name section there's an open button instead so it also affects what gets displayed in this button here similarly I can change this to directory and if I change it to directory it's asking me for a folder so right now must exist is set to true so I'm gonna type in a folder that doesn't exist and when I do that the OK button is disabled and I can't even click on it because the folder doesn't exist but as soon as the folder exists the OK button lights up and I can click on it so if I change this to must exist false it will let me type in a folder name that doesn't exist and it just puts that in there let me just try that again yeah for some reason in this window I have to click OK twice so if I click on it once nothing happens but if I click on it again it does work it might be different with your operating system but here when I try here in Linux I have to click on the OK button twice I'm gonna change this back to a file I just wanted to show you something so let's say if I if I if I'm trying to browse for like just PNG files for example how would I do that because right now files of type is grayed out so it's gonna show me like all the files so in a case like this I actually have to do the rest in Python code using Python code so I'm gonna save this project and then in here I have a reference to my path chooser input widget so self dot path chooser input one and I'm getting it from pygubu so builder dot get object and the name of the object is path chooser input one and how do I know that it's because when I click on it the ID is path chooser input one so if I change the name here I would have to change the name of the Python script as well okay so that's the ID for for this widget and that's how I'm going to reference it so from here I can do uh, the following I can type in file types equal both PNG and JPG and here I type in the extensions dot PNG then I put a space dot JPG so I put these in a in a tuple so this part that says both PNG and JPG and this part which lists the extensions are in a tuple but this tuple is in a list so I continue on going to the next item in the list and for the next one I'm just gonna put PNG only and I only want it to show PNG for that type of selection the next selection will be JPG only and for this selection I only want it to show dot JPG okay and that's all just being stored in a variable so I'm not applying it to the path chooser input widget just yet but we're gonna do that now so self dot path chooser input one dot configure file types equal file types so file types is for the path chooser input widget and then file underscore types is for my variable here so I'm just gonna run it and see what we get yeah and you can see down here it says files of type and then you can pick and choose so right now it's set to PNG and JPG which is why I can see this file and this file if I change it to PNG only I get just PNG if I change it to JPG I just get JPG so that's how you can add a filter uh, to, to have it show specific file types you have to uh, do that in a Python script so that leads us to this option here that says default extension so default extension works like this like if I try to browse for a file and I type in an, a file name that doesn't exist for example I just you know type a bunch of uh, random characters here 
when I click on save, it's not assuming what the file extension is. It just puts the name of the file with no extension. And that's because I have must exist equal to, uh, to false. So here I can specify a default extension. So I'm, I'm just going to put in dot PNG. And when I do that, regardless of what I type in here, even if I don't specify an extension, it's going to add the default extension for me. So that's what default extension does. And the next option I was going to show you is image. So remember how I said you can change the, the play button uh, icon here, like the image. You can do that here just by clicking on this magnifying glass. So here I have some random images that I can choose from. I'm just going to choose pizza.png. And you can see that my browse button just turned into a pizza. So if you do decide to change the image of the browse button, you just have to ensure that you do include it in your project. Uh, Cause you'll notice that when you go to the code section and then click on code script, you can see that it's referencing the image here. So if you do change the image, uh, just make sure you actually bundle the image along with it so that your project can, can find the image if you send it to like someone else. Okay, so now that we have our path chooser input widget working the way that we want, how do we actually get the path so that we can use it in our Python script? So to do that, we would have to use self.pathchooser input. So we basically call the widget and then dot entry. So this has access to the entry widget. And then with any entry widget, we can just use the get method to, uh, to, to get the text that's being displayed in that widget. So I'm just going to print this out to see what we get when we run our application. Well, right now when we run it, um, it's, it's immediately running this. So there's nothing here. And then it's immediately showing, showing nothing essentially. So I'm just going to quickly add a button to this project. So here, I'm just going to call this btn get, and we're just going to set the text to get as well. And here where it says command, we're just going to put in on get button clicked. So this is the method that we want to run whenever this button gets clicked. Okay, I'm just going to save it and we'll go in here and we'll create that method. The button has been clicked. Let's just make sure it works. It does. Yeah, we can see it getting printed down here. So it's obviously connected. So now we can move this get line over to the button. So essentially, whenever the get button is clicked, we're going to get the text that's inside the entry widget for the path chooser input widget. And let's just uh, make sure it works. So I'm just going to click on browse. We'll select test.jpg. And I'm going to click on get. Yep, and there it is. So it's basically showing what we have in here. If I change this to something else, it's going to reflect whatever I type in here as well. So to do anything useful with the path, whether it's a, a, a directory or whether it's a file, you would likely want to use a path lib, uh, the path lib library. And um, so you would basically just put from path lib import path. And then here you can say user path equal and here we're getting the path as a string, but we want to convert it to a path object. And when we do that, you'll have access to things like write text, write bytes. You can check to see whether the path exists or not. And there's a whole bunch of other uh, options that you can uh, choose from and a bunch of methods that you can run from the path that was uh, put into the entry widget in the path chooser input widget. So this is how 
you get the information that your user has selected from the path chooser input widget. You basically put in path chooser input one or whatever the name of your path chooser input widget is, dot entry dot get. And that gets the, uh, the text that's in the entry widget. So that's pretty much it for the path chooser input widget. It's a fairly straightforward widget, but nevertheless, it's uh, quite useful. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Until the next tutorial, thanks for watching.